Hello there, everyone. Welcome to another Italian pronunciation video, this time for the aria Nessun Dorma by Puccini. We will explore the tips and tricks to help you sing your aria without accent, and also discuss the proper open and closed vowels and other non-phonetic things such as phrasal doubling and assimilation. Before we do that, please direct your attention to the description of this video below. You will see various links to my websites, my Facebook fan page. Uh, please give me a visit and a like if you have a moment. Uh, also, there is a link to the Rye site, the Rye Pronunciation Dictionary. You can follow the link below or type in a search engine, R-A-I-D-O-P, and it'll take you to the site. At this site, you can type in any word, and there's a playback button. You can hear the word in Italian said by, uh, pronounced by a native speaker. Um, the very useful site. It also acknowledges the existence of non-phonetic Italian, such as phrasal doubling and assimilation. You can see that in action in whole lines of text. Um, if you're new to that, or if that's something you haven't heard before in Italian in your studies, uh, by the end of this video, you should have a pretty firm grasp of what I'm talking about. Um, so also, in the description below, um, I've left the uh, whole text there for you in my system where I note the non-phonetic parts of Italian um, so, so that you can follow along as we go through the pronunciation. So uh, well, let's do that, shall we? First we'll go through the whole text line by line and then we'll go word by word. So here's the line by line. Nessun dorma. Nessun dorma. Tu pure o principessa e nella tua fredda stanza guardi le stelle che tremano d'amore e di speranza. Ma il mistero è chiuso in me, il nome mio nessun saprà. Non ho sulla tua bocca, lo dirò quando la luce splenderà ed il mio bacio scioglierà il silenzio che ti fa mia di legua o notte tramontate stelle all'alba vincerò ok so that's the whole thing um, so the first thing to note as we go through the word for word is that everybody says the title wrong, right? Everybody says nessun dorma, right? Especially English speakers. Uh, the word is nessuno. The accent is on the su. So it's nessun dorma, right? The accent is on the u. Okay. So the very first word, it starts with the closed e, right? So let's talk about e's and o's. So e's and o's are the non-phonetic vowels in Italian. They can either be pronounced in open or closed form. So let's demonstrate. So here's the closed form of e, a, right? So it's like hey in, in English. And the open form of e is a, as in head, okay? And the difference is in English, there is a glide, so our jaws move. In Italian, the vowels stay pure. So let's demonstrate the difference between those two languages even further. Okay, so if I'm going to say, hey, in English, in slow motion, my jaw slowly closes to uh, an E vowel. In Italian, it just stays, a, right? It's just to stay. It doesn't go, a, with the close. And if I was going to say, had in Italian, my jaw closed slowly to an I vowel, right? And in Italian, it's going to just stay pure, like a, ah, right? So that's the difference. So in Italian, vowels are pure, they do not harmonize. In English, they do harmonize. Okay, so um, the next thing we have in this first word is a double S. So ne soon, ne soon. U in Italian is always U, it's never anything else. So, U is an absolute phonetic vowel, meaning it's always exactly the same, right? So, um, 
nessun is your first word. The next word, we have O in its open form, which is an A-W sound. A, right? So, dorma, right? So, um, O can either be found as an open vowel, A, like in saw in English, or in O, like as in oats in English. So, closed, O, open, A. Okay, so, and again, uh, the same explanation without the glides in Italian, with glides in English. So, D-O is da r ma right? So, if we do the word slowly, da r ma dorma, and that's the whole word. A in Italian, printed A, A is always A, no matter where it is in the word. It never neutralizes as it does in English. I'll give you an example of neutralized A in English, you should think of the word America. We uh, 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 right? America. So it's in an unstressed position both times. In Italian, that would be a me ri ka. A, a, a. So the a always stays a in Italian, no matter where it is. So dorma. So the next thing, uh, the word tu is tu. And u is always u and never changes. What happens in, in, in the next word is we have a double P that's not written. Now, so this is the first example of something non-phonetic in Italian, what Italians will do. Why this is, is because of the word tu. The word tu is a monosyllable that is strong. So what happens with the strong monosyllable it causes the next word, if it starts with a consonant, to double. So we would say tu Pure. See, pure, tu, pure. So, how exactly is that double P executed? It is executed by a space, a stop in the phonation. Do I actually say two P's? No. But to an Italian, it's considered a double P, right? So, how do I exactly do that? I go right up to the P and I don't say it. Tu, see, I'm ready to say a P, but I don't say it. Tu, pure. Tu pure. I don't say tu pure. I don't say two p's. You see, that's too much. Tu pure. So it's like a little bit of spice in the language. These doublings that happen. Okay. So now the next word, uh, we have u and an a. Right. We we concentrate on the vowels first. So u is always u. And now this e in the unaccented position is a closed e a. Right? So, pure, pure. Notice that the R is only a single flip. Now, when we go back to the word dorma, that R rolled. Right? So, rrr. And I always use the example of uh, uh, the old commercial in the United States was uh, ruffles, the, the potato chips, ruffles have ridges, right? It was the ar aristocratic. Uh, sounding English, where, where you, you would roll R's. Um, also, if you're in a handle oratorio and you're singing that kind of English, you, you tend to roll those R's, right? So, dorma, rrr, it's the same rolling. So, what happens is there's actual pitch through that R rolling as you sing. So, as you're singing, you know, dorma, there's actual pitch. There is never an R as in English, in the R. It's always R. So now, the reason for the roll is that the R touches a consonant. So any R touching a consonant in Italian is rolled. And in this case, in dorma, the R touches the M. Now, when it's surrounded by vowels, it's just a single trill. So if we look, going back to pure, it's not pure, but it's pure. Re, just one flip. So that's your rule for rolled R. Surrounded by vowels, it is flipped. Touching a consonant, it rolls. So now going on to the next combination of words, we have O, which is the interjection. Now, this can either be open or closed. It's your choice, right? So, uh, O principessa. Notice again, there's a double P written out. The word O is a strong monosyllable. It causes the P to double. And I do it exactly as I do to Pure o principessa. Tu pure o principessa. 
See, double P, double P. Now, principessa, if I do in slow motion, let's go through every single thing that happens. We have a rolled R, why? Because it touches a P. It doesn't matter what side of the R has a consonant. If it touches a consonant, it's rolled. Now, uh, CI in Italian is CI, because I is a soft vowel, right? CA would be CA, because A is a strong vowel. So um, you can memorize all the strong vowels, A, O, and U, and the soft vowels are E and A. Right, so chi, so ka, chi, che, ku, right, and there we have it, uh, ko, right, so all the strong vowels, all the all the weak vowels, so principessa. Notice that the stress in this case, the e is closed. Principessa. Uh, one more thing, the n. Because it touches the ch, it touches a consonant, it's going to double in this case. So n is very, n is like the, is the chameleon in the Italian language. It assimilates into the next consonant. So wherever you're going to form the next concert, the next consonant, n goes right into that. So in this case, this n is going to go mm, before the ch. So watch again. Principessa. So there's actual pitch going through that N. Okay, going on. Nella. So double L in this word. We have a closed E. Remember, A is always A. And to make double L, we keep L in phonation. L. So nella. Uh, so notice that. Versus single L, nella. Nella. We actually exaggerate the L. And we keep the tip of our tongue on our on our palate while our vocal cords are engaged. L nella. Okay, going on. Tua. So this is technically a one-syllable word, but the U gets a lot. And it sounds like two syllables, right? Uh, tua. Right? So it's a definite U and an A. It's just the A is a lot shorter. Now, you'll notice that often... This word will be written over one note, and you actually have to manufacture a grace note to sing it properly. That's not written. Going on, fredda. So double D, fredda. So I go up to the D, I don't say it, and then I say it. Fredda, double D. Closed E, notice A in the middle, right? And a rolled R, because it touches the F. Fredda. Z in Italian can be either DZ or TZ, and you have to memorize it. In this case, it's TZ, the word for room, stanza. So it's like the word in, it's like the Z in Mozart or pizza. Now, other times you'll have a DZ, and that has to do with whether in the old form in Latin there was a D in the word, and when they made it into Italian, it was spelled with a Z. Uh, an example of that is like olezzo or mezzo. It's a DZ, so you just have to memorize, especially with double Z, okay? So stanza. Um, and a little word to the war warning that a lot of initial Z in Italian that used to be TZ has now become DZ in modern spoken Italian. So if you're singing for an Italian conductor and you know that it's TZ and he says it's DZ, just... Just do it. it. Doesn't it's not going to change anybody's life. A uh, word that comes to mind is zio, which is proper to say tz, the word for aunt or uncle. Zia, zio. Now in modern Italian, they say zio. All right, a lot, a lot of people say zio. So that's happening. It's a modern phenomenon. Okay, going on. Guardi. So in IPA, you'll see a w for the u, right? But if you think about uh, American position W, it's down, guardi, down here. The Italian position for W is from an U. That's why it's called double U, right? Guardi, right? Now, you're not going to say it as a pure vowel as I just did. I held it too long, right? But you're going to start from the U position, guardi, and then now you sound Italian, see? Instead of guardi in American, right? If I say welcome in Italian, welcome, 
welcome. In Italian, we'd say welcome, right? Ooh, from the ooh, yes. Okay, so guardi. That's why it always seems as if we're shouting when we speak Italian, right? Because right, there's a lot of res resonance. So if you get in that position also as a singer, you're going to cut right through an orchestra, right? Le, right? Le. So now I was talking about strong monosyllables before, and now we have a weak one. And it's actually easier to memorize the weak ones because there are fewer. So a lot of definite articles like la, le, lo, gli, those are all monosyllables, and they do not double. Right? So if you notice, there's no double S after le. So le stelle. But what is, it's closed. The word for stars, the A is closed, right? Stelle. Okay? So, next, the word K is, the H is there to make this. Remember, we did the soft and the hard vowel. So the normal thing for CE is C, right? And then we put the H to make it hard. K. Right? So, K, and now this is a strong monosyllable. So, I would say, K tremano. So, notice I did double T. So, how do I do double T? I did it just like double P. I go up to the T and I don't say it. K tremano. Right? K tremano. Now, the space is what makes the expression, not the force of the T. Right? So double T isn't made by making a T any harder in the attack. It's just the space. Right? So I have the license to do it wherever I want if I have control over that space. Que tremano. Right? If I'm really expressive, que tremano. You see? Right? That's the space that makes it. So again, I go up to the T. I don't do two T's. Right? Here's a way I could do it wrong. Que Tremano, right? The other mistake I hear is uh, singers cutting the vowel before the double T. So they'll say a word like all, like tutto, that's the proper way to say it, but they'll say tutto, where there's no vowel. So you want a long vowel, tutto. Now I did a very strong double T just by holding the space. Now, depending on the time you have in singing, of course, you, you might have, you have to do it shorter. So going back to our words that we actually have, que trema, I can actually say the que longer before the tremano. Okay, so now the third person plural of parts of verbs, though in this case, they tremble, right? They always has the accent in a, in in a, in the on the first syllable, right? It's the anti-penultimate syllable. The normal stress in Italian is on the second to last syllable or the penultimate stress, right? Now that is the normal stress, but that rule is broken. You can have stress on the last syllable. You can also have stress on the second to last syllable, as in this word. So in this case. The E is open on that stress, tremano, okay? Which brings me to my next point about closed and open E's. Um, we, I'm always being asked about what the rules are, and unfortunately, on the stress, there is no rule. You have to memorize the stress. The stress syllable can either be open or closed. Now, the good news is unstressed, the unaccented syllable is all closed. So you can go through this whole aria, look at everything that is not stressed, and you will see that um, they're all closed vowels. Now, your voice teachers may have you sing them more open. That's fine. Do whatever you need to do within your vocal technique. No one is encouraging you to sing a closed vowel that's so closed that you're singing all in head resonance. However, to the audience, it has to sound more closed than the ones that are properly open. Okay, so um, that, that's what we need to hear. So, in this case, tramano. Notice that the O is closed. It's on the non-stress. The E that's accented happens to be open, right? So now let's go to the next word because we have a stressed vowel. Remember, I told you you have to memorize all of the stressed vowels. So where is the stress in amore? It's on the O, and it's a closed O this time. So there's no rhyme or reason. Sometimes they're open, sometimes they're closed. 
And sometimes when you change open to close, it changes the meaning of the words. Okay, so amore. So you have single M, single R, closed O, closed E. So how could I do it wrong? I could double the M, I could double the R. Amore. I hear this a lot, right? And there are actually some dialects in Italian where that's the way you say it. In, uh, uh, in Neapolitan, it's amore, right? Where we neutralize the last syllable and we double the M and we roll the R, right? Um, so uh, in this case, you want to have single M and single R for, for the, the, the dialect of Italian for opera, right? So... How do we get rid of doubles when we're, we're doubling? Um, for, well, you can practice the vowels first. Here's one way. So if I generously do aoe, and I feel the legato, aoe, amore, when I put the consonants back in, I can do the consonants very sharply as long as I don't linger. As soon as I keep the M in phonation, mm, it's double M. No matter how softly I do it, amore, you see? Double M, wrong, right? Amore. So I keep the, the phonation, the lion's share of the phonation on the vowels, right? And we know how to roll an R. We have to actually to roll the R. So amore. Okay, so there we have our, that's a good word for single consonants. Now, next word is the word for and. It's a single syllable and it's a strong syllable, right? So we would double the D, A, D. So it's A. So now if I were to say A, that's the word for is, right? So and if so, if I say a disperanza, I'm saying and it and of hope. If I say a disperanza, I'm saying it is of hope. You see, so that the meaning changes. So the word for is is open e a. The word for and is a. If you memorize nothing else in your travels, you should memorize those first two words. So now notice that the, the A is a strong monosyllable, so there are two Ds. Now the preposition D is a weak, the of is a weak monosyllable, so there is no doubling, okay? Now, there's another combination of D-I with an accent, which is poetic for the word D, for day, I'm sorry, right? So D-I with an accent, that is day. So when you see that, that does double, right? And don't go around, if you go to Italy, don't say buon di to somebody, because that's the poetic way to say day, right? Even though it sounds like English, you'll get laughed at, right? The, the word is giorno in modern Italian, right? So don't go around saying buon di. So in this case, di is a weak monosyllable, right? So e di speranza. So notice again, the z is the tz. The n phonates, it's double, right? Speranza. And also notice that the E is A. It is not influenced by the R. So um, that's the last point I'd like to make is that in Italian, the vowels are not harmonizing to anything. So in English, the vowels harmonize to the consonants. In Italian, the vowels harmonize to nothing. They are pure, right? They, they always have integrity, right? So, speranza, speranza, right? The R is flipped between two vowels. Close the going on. Ma, right? Il, all monosyllables, right? So, the next, ma is a strong monosyllable, but the next word starts with the vowel, right? So, it's going to elide. Mio, so all of these possessive words, mine, yours, tuo, tua, they have the accent on the first vowel, mio, mia, okay? So it's actually a two-syllable word technically, right? You need an extra grace note to say it. So to put all of this together, 
it becomes one big word. Ma il mio. So if you think about the the um the journey that the vowels have to take, because in Italian you say every vowel you see. So you have to say a e e o a i o and you have to travel that distance. Ma il mio. You see, that's a lot of flesh in your face as it goes. Going on. Mistero. So the, oh, the, the stress in this case is an open E. Mistero. So we're going to talk about S and how S can be messy in the theater. So when I speak, here's the difference between lyric Italian and spoken Italian. When I speak Italian, I can say mistero, and I don't have to worry about where the S goes if it's on the first syllable. When you sing, you have to make sure that the first syllable is all E and the S is completely on the next note. Mi stero. So when you're singing, ma il mi stero è più, right? You see, you don't want ma il mi stero. That's what you don't want in slow motion, the S on that one note early. You ruin your legato, okay? Uh, going on. Uh, here's the word for is, eh, open. And notice, as we said before, it's a strong monosyllable. Eh, chiuso. So there's a K sound, right? The H makes the, uh, the CI hard, like a K sound, right? If it didn't have the H, it would be chi. But in this case, it's chiuso, right? Chiuso. Now, it's like saying G, chiuso, but chiuso. Now, how is it like that? Well, the difference between that and English, English would be way more unvoiced on the K sound now, wouldn't it? It would be chiuso with k, 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 right? But in Italian, it's closer to G, the voiced. Chiuso, chiuso. You see, so you can practice that, going from G to just the point at where it becomes a K. Okay, going on, we have an assimilation. So normally the word I-N is in, right? In. But before an M, it becomes ime. Did you see what happened? Watch my lips. Ime. So what happens? I'm going to say me, and then the N does what's called an assimilation. It assimilates onto the lips. Ime. So if I did it in slow motion, ime. Is there any n? Not at all, right? If I did that, it would sound like this. Iname. Does that make sense? You see? So say I tried to make the N, and I'm trying to sing legato. I have to release the tongue from the tip of my mouth. Now, while I'm attempting to make legato, I have to subst I have to put a vowel in there. So my position will get all off. So as I do it, in a me. Very hard to sing, right? But if I do in me, there's no change. There's legato, right? There's vowel, consonant, vowel. No shadow vowel. Now Italians do this all the time in speech in speech without thinking about it. So they'll say, Ma il mistero è chiuso in me. You see? And it goes by that fast. Ime. Right? So now if if you hang on to the M too long, that's another way you can exaggerate it and it calls attention to itself. It will be wrong, right? Im if I double the M. Right? So it has to be in the most natural way, in the most legato way. So that's our first assimilation in the aria. Let's go on. Il nome. So what happens? You when you have um a consonant, an L before an N, it, it actually, it will assimilate also into the N, right? So it will stay in phonation, become a double L. Il nome. So I have to work really hard for that L. Il nome, right? Il nome. More than in speech. So when you're singing, you really have to make sure you have phonation on that L. So nome is a single M and a closed O and a closed E. Now we've already done that, so we're gonna go, we're gonna start to go faster now. Mio, that follows the pronoun rule as before. We've already had uh, nessun, which this time 
is set with the accent right. So now let's talk about that. Why did Puccini set the very first word and play against the accent of the word? Well, there's a phenomenon in Italian. When Italians get coy or excited, they start to elongate the vowels. And because the vowels are elongated, it plays against the natural accent of the word, right? So if I said very calmly, nessun dorma at the beginning, right? But if I was really like, yeah, you know what? You really think everybody, right? You think everybody's going to find out my name, right? As Kalaf, you say, nessun dorma, right? Nessun dorma. The vowels get long. So this is what Puccini was after when he wrote, writes the beginning of the aria. And he's also done this in another section uh, where he said, uh, the word is cuando, and he's like, cuando la luce, right? The accent is, seems on the wrong syllable. And again, it's that same phenomenon of the Italian getting coy and, and elongating the vowel. So I hope that helps you if you're struggling with that. Um, okay, so uh, in this case, the word is nessun, it's, it's, it's set with not against the accent, right? And sapra, a, a. So here's the future tense, sapra. It ends on the final syllable. There's a rolled R Y because the R touches the P. So now here is the word no in Italian. Normally, this word would be open, right? Now the reason why it's open is because it's usually, when you say no, it's in the stressed position, right? So if I'm going to say something, you know, do you have any potatoes? No. Open. Right? Now, we have two no's in a row. So when we say no, no, the first no becomes closed because it's in an unstressed position. And then the second N is open. The second O is open, right? So now... The word no to negate is also a doubling word. It's a strong monosyllable. So notice how this works out. So when you're saying no no sulla tua bocca, right? And again, um, he is playing against the accent of the word sulla. The, the accent should be on the first syllable. But he's like sulla tua bocca, right? Vowel, 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 vowel. Right? Again, Puccini's doing this over and over and over and over again, playing against the accents of the words. So you have to have uh, lots of vowels, right? So the word sulla has a double L. We've already covered that. Tua follows the pattern of mio with the lion's share of the vowel on the first. Bocca, right? Bocca. Again, the double K is done with the stop in phonation. It's not done with k overly doing, overdoing the K, doing two Ks, bocca. It's not done by cutting the vowel short, bocca. Bocca is how you do it. Long vowel, go up to the K, don't say it, then say it. Okay, the word lo is a weak monosyllable. Lo dirò. I will say, right? It, it, it will be, it, I will say, right? Dirò. Future, dirò. Always um, open, open at the end. Dirò. Now, words that end on the final syllable usually will double the next consonant. See? So we're saying, lo dirò quando. Double Q, double K, right? And again, we know how to do double K. Now, cuando follows the same principle of um, QU in Italian is U, from the U position, as we've done before, right? Cuando, the N goes into the D. La is a weak monosyllable. La luce, right? Luce, che, che, luce, right? Um... Splendera. Now notice this, the accent is on the ah, 
right? So we know all unstressed E's are closed. This is very important as you, um, you know, as you come to the end of a phrase, these closed vowels will propel you forward. Splendera. Notice all the ends. The end is uh, is into the D, right? Splendera. Uh, going on. Uh, a is the word for and. Now, Italians don't like to say eil because it's ugly. So the D is there just for beauty. E di mio, right? So the D is a beautification tactic, right? E di mio bacio, bacio, kiss, right? Bacio is what I hear a lot. See what I did? Wrong, double the ch, right? Bacio, wrong. Bacio, long a. Uh. Notice this word, there's a lot of uh, future tense with the accent on the last. So notice the O and the E are going to be closed. Sholiera, lie. Right? So there's a, this sh, uh, sho, lie, ra. So how do we do lie? We do um, y, e, ye. Right? Actually, e position, ye. We preceded by a double L. Lie. Sholie, right? If you want to take it in parts, sholiera, flipped R, bright R at the end. Il silencio. Notice the N into the T Z, open E. Silencio. Uh, now notice you have two strong words. You have the word K, and you have the word fa. So I've written a double M. And I've written a double T. K T Famia. Beautiful, right? Very expressive. K T Famia. Right? Double double T double M. If you're in doubt, listen to Italian singers and listen to Franco Corelli, right? You'll hear a lot of these phrasal doublings done very, very elegantly. Right? Silencio. K T Famia. Right? Um, and then the chorus sings off stage, and you come back in on dilegua. Right? Close the, not dilegua. Dilegua. O can either be open or closed. It's your choice. Right? And it's a strong monosyllable. O notte. So double N, double T. Not. And it's the same principle of going up to the T, not saying it, not cutting the vowel too short before it. Tramontate. Now, you have um, single T's, right? Single T, right? You have rolled R and you have an N going into a T. These are all the things you have to hit. Tramontate, not tate. That's a mistake I hear. Tramontate, wrong, right? Tramontate. So make sure the A is long. Stele. Stele. Right? Double L, close D. Alalba. This is a great thing because before you come up to the high B, you're going to get your voice forward on these L's. Alalba. And you see it's bouncy. Alalba vincero. Bouncy, right? It's nice. It goes around, right? Alalba vincero. Now, how can you mess up the top part by opening vowels in the wrong place? So if you say vince, you're done. Vincero. Because you stay on one track, not vince. Right? So remember the principle of unstressed vowels are closed. Right? So the only thing that's open is the A. Oh, right? And you can sing that however you want, right? Because you're singing it on higher and higher, higher notes. Right? So you sing whatever makes you sound beautiful. Right? But technically the word is vincero. All'alba vincero. Okay, so we finished our word for word. Let's go back and do line by line. 
incorporate all the things we've gone over and go for beautiful line. Nessun dorma. Nessun dorma. Tu pure, o oh principessa, nella tua fredda stanza, guardi le stelle che tremano d'amore e di speranza. Ma il mio mistero è chiuso in me, il nome mio nessun saprà. Non ho sulla tua bocca, lo dirò quando la luce splenderà. Ed il mio bacio scioglierà il silenzio che ti fa mia. Di legua o notte, tramontate stelle, tramontate stelle, all'alba vincerò. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe. Please feel free to comment. And as always, we will see you at the opera.